but I think they do seem to suggest that the Quran, certainly in the form that we have it, so the final form, was indeed uttered by someone, presumably Muhammad. I mean, if Muhammad didn't exist, we'd have to invent him. In the period that Muslim tradition has always insisted that he lived. And that's great, because that, historically that then means that you can use the Quran as evidence for what some at least of the Arabs in the early 7th century thought they were about, thought was going on. But can we push it further? Can we conclude from this that everything that Muslim tradition says about Muhammad and the Quran is, is therefore true? Well, no, because the familiar problem remains. And the, 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 the glaring problem is this, that if what the biographies of Muhammad tell us are true, and Mecca was an inveterately pagan city, devoid of any Jewish or Christian presence, situated in the midst of a vast untenanted desert, then how are we to account for the abrupt appearance there of a fully-fledged monotheism, complete with references to Abraham, to Moses, and to Jesus? And this is the problem. And essentially, Ever since Western historians began writing about the origins of Islam, this is the problem that they have had to wrestle with. And various explanations have, have been proposed, of which the most popular is that Mecca was somehow at the center of a great spice trade. It was kind of the Dubai of its day. And that Muhammad was a, was, was a trader, and he went up you know, in camp, trains of camels, and he went to, uh, to Jerusalem, and he went to Damascus, and he kind of picked up you know, he heard rabbis and he heard Christian priests and he picked up all this Moses, Jesus stuff and then he just bunged it into the Quran. 